dead in a cement mixer, says he's relieved an investigation into his son's death is to be reopened. Les Borkwell is convinced his son Lee was murdered before being thrown into a cement mixer by members of an organised crime gang eight years ago. Here's David Wright. The CCTV footage shows 33-year-old Lee Bulkwell at the wheel of his cement lorry, just hours before he's found dead. It appeared that he'd been crushed in a cement mixer at Baldwin's farm at South Ockenden near Thurrock. At the time, his death wasn't treated as suspicious by Essex police. However, two years ago, an inquest into Lee's death recorded a verdict of unlawful killing through gross negligence. Now it's been announced that his death is to be reinvestigated, much to the relief of Les Bulkwell, Lee's father. He's always maintained that his son was tortured and then murdered. Lee's life was ended by uh, some individuals who had been abusing drugs that night. And because there was an outstanding drugs debt that was owed by someone very close to Lee, uh, because the paranoia of the drugs had set in, it was, Lee was in the wrong place at the wrong time and, and set about uh, as a result of this drugs debt. And these people ended Lee's life. Mr Bulkwell has always been critical of Essex Police. He's now backed up by the Independent Police Complaints Commission, which has published a damning report into the investigation. Les now wants another force to take control, but that isn't going to happen. If you, if you ask me bluntly, have I got much faith in it? No. The reason is because Essex Police are involved. Um, we think it should be an independent police investigation from a, to a totally independent force. In a statement, Essex Police says it continues to keep an open mind on the cause of Lee Bulkwell's death. However, Les Bulkwell's mind was made up a long time ago. David Wright, Anglia News, South Ockenden. Local residents have been protesting at the opening of a new Tesco Express store in Norwich today. About 40 people gathered outside the branch on Unthank Road this morning. Tesco says it will provide more choice for shoppers. The scheme eventually went ahead after being rejected five times by the City Council. Well, we wanted to keep the campaign going, even though the, the shop is now here. We want to encourage people to continue to use the local shops. And generally speaking, we want to keep the community spirit going, which is why we've made this very light-hearted and hopefully fun for people to join in, especially the kids. South End United were thrown another lifeline in the High Court today. The Shrimpers were last week given until August the 2nd to pay a tax bill. South End, who recently appointed Paul Sturrock as manager, now have four weeks to come up with the £140,000 they owe a loan company. Financial troubles are nothing new to football supporters in Kings Lynn, whose club went out of business last season. Yep, since then a new club's been formed and last night they got off to the best possible start against a Norwich City eleven. Jim Rice has more. It's not quite a phoenix from the flames, but the Linnets are back in business. A new club, a new name, Kingsland Town, and ready for a new season that some thought they'd never see. That's heartbreaking for fans of the club, I think. You, you come every week and you, you're part of the club week in, week out, and to lose it is, for this sort of community is it's horrible. To finally see it back in the walks is fantastic. When they finished, I cried. Yeah, well, they're just they're starting up again. It's good, good for good on them. Oh, I was a bit dubious for a long time, but it's now all fired up again. Something worth celebrating, albeit that budgets are tight, as Kings Lynn prepare for life in the United Counties League under the guidance of Speedway promoters Buster and Jonathan Chapman. It was sad when we first got here, and I don't think a lot of people had the vision, but I can honestly say that from the literally probably the third visit that we had, walked around and planned things, this is how we visualised it, and we, we literally haven't moved off of that. It's fantastic to just see it in place, and some people come in here for the first time in, in those six months, and they're just gobsmacked. The Kingsland Town's first ever fixture, the Walks welcomed the Norwich City eleven, minus most of its top players, away at a training camp in Germany. But there was one famous name in their ranks, 14-year-old goalkeeper Angus Gunn, son of Brian Gunn, making his debut as a substitute. The game itself finished in a 2-0 win for Kings Lynn, a penalty from Lynn stalwart and local lad Jack Defty, and a second from Brady Stone. The perfect start to what Linnets fans hope will be a long and successful future. Jim Rice, Anglia News.
Yeah, great start there. Meanwhile, Norwich looks set to sign striker Simeon Jackson from Gillingham. The 23-year-old Canada international on the right here has scored 41 goals in 113 games since moving to Kent from Russian and Diamonds just over two years ago. Reports put the fee at £600,000, with Cody McDonald going the other way on loan. Meanwhile, Tom Adiemi is off to Bradford again on loan. Staff at a care home in Suffolk have been presented with an award for the way they dealt with a fire earlier this year. 34 residents at the Brandon Park Residential Home in Brandon were led to safety when a fire broke out in June. Now, one of our train lines recorded the best performance in the country last month. Let's take a look at it. It is the C2C London to South End line, and it had a punctuality rate of 97% in June. Congratulations to them across the country. 93% of trains ran on time. Right, we've got some breaking news for you now, and we're hearing about fire crews who have been called to the scene of a lightning strike in Bedfordshire. Yes, five appliances and an aerial platform have gone to the Haynes Park estate in Haynes near Bedford. It's been understood that the roof there is alight, but there are no reports at this stage of anyone being injured. Of course, if there's any update, we'll bring that to you on our late bulletin. And, of course, we've got the weather coming up shortly as well. Now, from